Hello everyone. Welcome back. So in the last two weeks, uh, we introduced the basic concepts of EM waves. We talked about dispersion, diffraction limit and so on. And then we talked about the optical properties of materials, metals, dielectrics, you know, how they behave. You know, we derived the Lorentz oscillator model and the Drude model, which is an extension of Lorentz oscillator model. So in this week, I want to talk about optical properties of low dimensional systems. So what do I mean by low dimensional systems? Well, if you look at the bulk materials, you know, they're three dimensional materials, electrons can freely move about in all the three dimensions. And so we call them the 3D or you know, bulk materials. But suppose if I somehow confine the electrons to move only in a certain plane. You know, for example, here, I'm showing you a quantum well. A quantum well essentially confines electrons to move about only in the, uh, in the plane. For example, if I call this as my x-axis, so, and let's say the thickness of this strip or, you know, is 10 nanometers, let's say, just for the sake of uh, example. If I confine my electrons to move about only in the 10 nanometer dimension and anywhere on the, you know, if I call this as X and YZ plane can be anything. This is my Y and Z. It can freely move about in the YZ axis, but only in the X axis, it's confined to about a 10 nanometer length. That is my quantum well, right? Similarly, I can also think about two dimensional confinement. So I can let the uh, electrons move about in the Z axis freely, but confine them in the X, Y plane, confined in X, Y plane. So I'll call it as a nano wire. Okay. And then I can extend it even further. I can confine an electron to move about only in the, uh, so, uh, sorry, it, confine it in all three dimensions. And that will give me a quantum dot as shown in the right picture here. So these are essentially lower dimensional structures. A bulk structure is 3D, the regular one. 2D is one dimensional confinement. 1D nanowire is a two dimensional confinement. A quantum dot is a three dimensional confinement. Essentially, this diameter of the, this dot could be something like 10 nanometers. Okay. So this is a confined structure. And it turns out that, you know, so far in the last week, we have seen the material properties, but we never really took the size of the structure into account. Okay, so this is an extension. So what happens if you have such structures? How do the optical properties change? Okay, let's consider first the metals. That's where we left off last uh, left off last week. So let's look at metals. Okay, metals are described by Drude model. We have already talked about it. Let's say epsilon omega equal to epsilon infinity minus omega p square divided by omega square plus i gamma omega. This is my Drude model. So what happens, this is this is valid for, let's say a bulk piece of metal, you know, a couple of centimeters of metal is there, this will work. But what if I try to confine it to a quantum well? I just make a metal film of, let's say, 20 nanometers. What will happen to the optical properties? Well, it turns out that if you have metals, you don't need to really worry about the low dimensional you know, conf uh, confinement properties, okay? Unless you go below, uh, let's say, two nanometers or, or two to three nanometers of size, you don't have to worry. Okay. The metal behaves similar to a regular bulk metal, but the moment you can, you make a thin film of metal of two nanometers, the dielectric function itself changes and it acquires basically a character you, from epsilon omega. You have to start talking about epsilon of K comma omega, where K is my spatial frequency, two pi by let's say confinement is happening in the, you know, the the size is basically D, okay, the thickness of the film, let's say. In that case, we have to, we can assign a spatial uh, frequency 2 pi by D, and then you have to take that into account and it becomes slightly complicated. But anyway, you know, overall, confinement doesn't really matter, okay. Confinement effects, confinement effects do not uh, or rather are not significant are not significant for sizes greater than let's say 3 nanometers okay so we don't have to worry about most of the time and in this lecture in this course we really don't want to get into that okay but what we will study is the semiconductors if you look at semiconductors The confinement effects are significant. Okay, 
so for example if i make a semiconductor out of uh, a 10 nanometer wide semiconductor let's say quantum well okay it plays a significant uh, role so confinement effects are significant all right so how significant significant why should we care about confinement uh, effects so the question is why are low dimensional systems important okay so i'm giving you examples here so the image on the left you see what is known as uh, high resolution transmission electron micrograph tem image so what this is showing you is a, a layer of aluminum arsenide sandwiched between two gallium arsenide layers so this is my gallium arsenide right and the bottom is another gallium arsenide here in between them you have a aluminum arsenide the beauty is if you look at the axis here this is 1 nanometer so effectively what you are looking at is this part of aluminum arsenide is only 2 nanometers and you can actually count here you know let's say 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 six atomic layers so what you are seeing here is the atoms of aluminum and arsenic okay and in the bottom and the top you are seeing gallium and arsenic and that is why you see this you know the sizes of the dots are larger in gallium arsenide because gallium is a much larger material whereas aluminum is a smaller material so the dots are smaller as well so you clearly see that effect okay so now what happens is if you have such a structure what would happen okay so this is a example of a confined structure because in this case okay uh, if you look at aluminum arsenide well aluminum arsenide has a band gap of about uh, 2. Point I think 2.1 or 2.2 eV, 2.1 eV, let's say, and then gallium arsenide has a band gap of 1.42 eV. So I'm able to basically make structures with different band gaps in this sort of a supercell. Okay, why is this important? Well, I have an example here on the right, which is taken from a textbook Neiman. So what you see here is a gall gallium arsenide structure sandwiched between aluminum and gallium arsenide. Okay. So I told you that aluminum arsenide has a band gap of 2.1 eV, but by varying the composition of aluminum and gallium, we can achieve different amounts of band gaps slightly. And what you see here is a low band, low eG material. Band band gap of gallium arsenide is 1.4 eV, and aluminum gallium arsenide will be higher, high eG band. Gap. Okay. So we are we are sandwiching a low band gap material between two high band gap materials, and this structure can be as small as two nanometers. It can be typically about 10 nanometer size. what happens if you have such a structure in that case what happens is you can actually create both electrons and holes to be in the same physical region of space so for example here i can try to introduce my electrons from the left side and holes from the right side into the same region which has a smaller band gap so electrons will and holes will go and accumulate there and then they can recombine and actually give you light light emission can happen and it turns out that this sort of a low dimensional systems you know we call them as quantum wells they are very very important for light emission applications so let's say well whether you look at let's say an led or a laser and so on they are very much dependent on this technology okay an example is you know shown on the bottom here wherein instead of just two layers or three layers we have a stack of multi layers of you know quantum wells and then in between you have an active layer here in the center active layer means it actually emits light and surrounding that you have basically an interface a super lattice of various refractive indices that will actually work as a mirror and it forms a nice laser cavity we'll talk about lasers in the week 7 or 8 of this course but for now uh, what happens is you have this and the light emission happens so this sort of low dimension systems are very important for uh, lighting applications or lasers you know lasers are essential for all the communications for example if you don't have a proper you know laser at 1.5 microns you don't have any of this internet because all the long distance communication happens through fiber and central to that is a laser and to understand laser we have to understand the low dimensional properties all right so uh, another example here why are the low dimensional systems important you know in a way this sort of also motivates why nanophotonics is important right this is all nanoscale phenomena so if you look at any bulk semiconductor you must have heard about that and you know you have the valence and the conduction band so conduction band valence band so they are all you know there are bands of allowed states right in a regular semiconductor but now instead if i look at a quantum dot okay uh, that essentially is a confined structure instead of having a 
one second so yeah sorry about the disturbance uh, this is uh, i had to take the call all right so as i was saying if you have a bulk semiconductor you have the bands but the moment you let's say make a quantum dot out of a semiconductor let's say a 10 nanometer quantum dot okay as i have shown in the previous slides if you have that it turns out that the energy levels are no longer continuous but you have discrete energy levels as shown in the picture here so when you have such discrete energy levels you can have emission at those different for example here if i have let's say this level and this level an electron can make a transition from the higher level to the lower level and emit light similarly it can make a transition from this level to this level and emit light and it turns out that the the spacing between the energy levels is dictated by the size of the structure okay we will talk a little bit more about it later in the week to this week after a couple of lectures but essentially when you have this discrete levels it turns out that they have very nice optoelectronic properties and on the top here you know you are seeing basically emission spectrum of emission spectra of various nano uh, quantum dots okay and they have this very sharp lines if you uh, and if you look at even the bottom picture you see that there are these colloidal quantum dots which exhibit a very wide range of bright colors okay so there are very interesting applications of this uh, uh, low dimensional systems and that is what we will be learning in this week all right yeah there is a question i believe yeah so in the uh, figure mm -hmm. Okay. Well, th this is essentially a nomenclature talking about the type of uh, bands. Okay. Here, what happens is a quantum dot, colloidal quantum dot as well. So, I really don't want to get into that right now. But essentially, they have a one s like character. How is a s orbital? S orbital essentially means that electron is confined. Uh, it's uh, the the orbital looks spherical in shape. That means there's a probability of finding an electron in all three dimensions. But the moment you go to p orbital, it essentially means that electron can only exist in you know let's say a lobe on the top, a lobe on the bottom, and there are three different uh, degenerate levels called as p x, p y, p z. Similarly, d has a different shape. So essentially, a quantum dot can work as a uh, an atom. It's a kind of a pseudo atom, right? Or you know, uh, similar to an atom. An atom is what? you have a nucleus and an electron tightly bound to the nucleus okay but now you are trying to expand that the size of the quantum dot is larger of course but then there are electrons which are confined to a certain volume so it also has some similar properties as quantum dots and uh, yeah it's interesting that way in fact when we talk about the quantum confinement i'll talk about it you know you can actually see that once you understand the confinement in one dimensions if you go expand that into confinement in three dimensions you get these orbitals 1s 2s 3 uh, 2p 3s and so on what you study in chemistry they are actually solutions to a uh, problem of confining an electron in three dimensions okay so we'll talk about it later on all right but right now yeah i just want you to remember that this is a very very important and central idea low dimension systems and that's why we will spend the entire week on this so in the next lecture i'll start off with talking about absorption okay because we talked about briefly in the first week a little bit about when you're talking about the optical properties but there's something more to it we will actually understand the way to analytically approach that we will introduce that for the bulk material first and then we will talk about what changes when you go to a 2d material or in a rather confined material in one dimension right let's say quantum well what changes we will talk about it and finally show you what happens if you confine it in you know one one dimension what happens we'll show you that later in the week okay so this will be an interesting week and then we will move on from the next week all right yeah thank you